Hello, this is Mike Lively, and this is the final video of five, uh, where we're going to be comparing Unreal to uh, Paper Vision. Now, we'll be doing this later on as we move through the book, but this is the initial uh, changes that should be made as we move along with developing the software from the point that it is at now. And so what we'll be talking about today, you bet, something really cool. If you love Second Life, you're going to love this video, and it's teleporters. And you're probably familiar with, if you're familiar with Second Life, you're familiar with how great teleporters are being used in there, and I have built a lot of them in Second Life, let me tell you. And we can build them in paper vision as well. It's pretty easy. Specifically, what we look at, though, is not just building teleporters for t paper vision, because you can go to a position and translate to another just by clicking or hitting a, a zone, but also doing it graphically, actually setting up an interface for that. And uh, we'll be reviewing these at the end, these other changes we should be making, but let's go ahead and build our teleporter. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to come along here and go to Unreal, and I'm actually going to... Um, build double platform, set a teleport on one, and transport between the different uh, platforms. Let's go ahead and go up to full screen mode. So I'm going to come along here and hit the little full screen button, and I'm in full screen mode. That's pretty cool. And the first thing I want to do is start working with this brush. So I'm bringing this down so you can see the screen. And I've got my brush right here, and I'm going to click that and activate it. And I'm just going to go ahead and right click the box here and set its dimensions. And we'll make it uh, 2,000 48. We'll make the other 2048. And then we'll make this uh, 16. That'll be fine. And we'll hit OK, build. And uh, we've got that done. And let's go and add CSG. There we go. Now we want to build like a platform or a cube above this. And so I'm actually going to translate this brush up. There we go. I don't want to go too high, but high enough so you can tell the difference. And I'm going to change this dimension. So let's go ahead and right click on the box. And let's do a 256 by 256 by 256. That should be a pretty good size. By 256 by 256. Great. And I want to go ahead and add CSG. There we go. And you can see right now the entire material is actually the same material as was before. Why is that? Because that material was actually selected in the content browser. And when I built my cube, it, it actually uh, surrounded that. Uh, for me as well. If it hadn't been there, then I would have to actually select each side and, and add the material. So I have two materials, both looking the same. But let me actually make this a little different by actually selecting this or dragging another material on the top of this uh, cube right here. So I've selected it. Let's go to the content browser, make it a little bit more fancy, put something up there that looks a little different. So here's my content browser. And let's add something a little green. That'd be nice. Here's something that's a little bit green. We'll just drag that and change that top face. Drag that over and drop right on top of it. And the top face has changed. And so that's where we're going to put our second teleporter. And we're ready to go. And this kind of cube is kind of floating above the floor. So we can kind of rotate the floor here just a little bit so you can see that. You know, and, and this translator around here. There it is kind of floating there. Okay, and then not much more you can do with that. I mean, there's tons and tons of stuff that you can go from beyond this point, And we'll just leave it at this. So what we're going to do now is we're going to come along here and we're going to uh, add a teleporter. And the way you do that is you go back to your content browser. That's your best friend. And we'll bring that content browser over here. And what I want to do is go to Actor Classes. And I'm going to go down from Actor Classes to the Navigation node. Navigation point right here. And I want to click on that, make sure that's open. And down below that, you're going to find, let's go down just a little bit more, Teleporter UTT Teleporter. You want to click on that. So in the Teleporter tab, when you open that up, you find Teleporter Base and t UTT Teleporter. Click on that. And once you do that, whenever you right click on this floor, you're actually going to see the option to add a teleporter. Isn't that cool? So click on that. Now, if I want to add something else, all I have to do is select it in this assets right here. So for example, maybe I want to add, uh, we'll just choose anything, a camera actor. And then if I come along here and right click uh, on the floor or another place, I, I see add camera actor is here. So it, it gives you ability in a sense to change that tab so you can add different things. Let's go back to UTT teleporter. We're going to add a second teleporter. And we're going to add it this time. It's on the top of this cube right here. So we're going to right click on that. And we're going to add another teleporter. Pretty cool. Now I want you to be very careful about this G key right here. See that G key? If you click that, your teleporters will disappear. Everything will kind of disappear. So you want to keep that in a sense that activate it. So beware of hitting that G key. If you go there and everything's invisible, make sure you hit that G key to get everything back. So I need to add a light right now. So let's right click on here and add that light so we can actually see this thing. So we're going to go add actor, add point light. Let me bring that down so you can see it. Add actor, add point light. Got that right there. And we're going to actually tab through, uh, basically using the space bar, so you can tab through the different translation, rotation, resizing. Let's translate that up. 
great. I get that higher. Okay, we actually might put two lights in here. We'll put one right here. Okay. And uh, let's see. Is that good? Let's move around here. Let's make it bigger and see if that helps us a little bit. So I'm actually going to, once again, click on that, like, select that light and tab through the resizing. Let's make it larger. There we go. Now we're starting to make some uh, progress here. I'm going to tab through once again using this space bar and move that over just a little bit so I can get some light right on that cube. Bring it up a little, bring it back a little bit. There we go. Now I'm starting to see the base of that cube. Just bring it up a little bit higher. Okay, I'm a little happy with that so I can actually see that second teleporter. And now I'm actually going to activate those teleporters, tell them where to go. So all I need to do is just uh, make sure my pointer is selected and I'll double click on one of the teleporters. And I got this nice little control box, exactly when I had one in paper vision, for example. Here's the tag, that's the name of the teleporter, that's like the ID in the flash builder. So we'll call this Tele1. And then we want to go somewhere to a URL. So we'll just call that Tele2. Isn't that nice? Wouldn't it be nice to have a, a nice little graphical interface like this in paper vision? And it's not hard to do. In paper vision, you can build these boxes very rapidly, set them up using XML. Okay, that teleporter is done with. Let's go to the next teleporter. Click on that. We'll call this Tele2. Once again, that's like my ID in Flash Builder. And the bottom one we'll call Tele1. And that's where I'm going to go to when I walk through that teleporter. I just it's so easy to do this and remember once again typically when you want properties of anything you just kind of double click on it so we're ready to go right now except I'm not pointing in the right direction I actually want these arrows in a sense to point in the direction I'll hit the selection key point in the direction that I want to go so once it's selected let's tab and let's hit rotate and I want that arrow to rotate around so I'm actually looking at the direction of my other teleporter let's click this teleport and I want to tab through that and move that over a little bit over to the side so it's, you won't fall right off it when you teleport over tab again get the rotate you see how in, important it is to hit that space bar and tab around and now I'm looking in that direction let's add a start position we're going to right click we're going to add actor and we're going to put somewhere for us to start add player start and we'll start right here let's see where our arrows are pointing that's our X arrow right there so we actually want to point the other direction so we're tab and we'll turn it around so we're actually can pointing when we start to where we need to go so we're all ready to go. Good. Here I've got my start. Here I've got my teleporter one, and here I've got my teleporter two. And we're going to teleport between the two. So let's let's do one more thing. We've got to build the lighting and the paths. So come up here and go to build, and we'll just choose lighting without light mask just to basically speed up the uh, processing. Let's close that, and we're also going to build the AI pass. You don't do that, you won't be able to see your teleporters. You want to see this beautiful teleporter. You're going to love what you see here in a moment. And we're all ready to go. Let's close that and let's bring this up. Right click and play the game. So here I am in my system. So let's go to that teleporter over there and walk through that. And I'm going to teleport through that and I'm going to go up to that, that top uh, path, path there. And up I go. I'm actually on top. Now I can see the teleporter down below. You see that? I'm on the edge there. So if you can't see it, you can just look right down here. The teleporter's down. The second teleporter's down there. So if I just go straight, for example, and I see if, if it's, let's see what happens here. Let's see if I fall off. Ah, I fell off. Okay, there you go. And you can see once again I'm transporting between these two paths. Pretty, pretty cool. Pretty cool. And let's see if we can see that. There's that second teleporter up there. You see that up there? That's what I'm actually transporting up to. This is just super fun. I just could do this all day long. And I just loved Second Life. And I loved building. Uh, teleporters in Second Life. It's just so super fun. So let's go back up to that top. Great. And you can just certainly have, have a lot of fun with this and work with this all day long and it's just so super cool. So I actually fell off the building at that point. Hey, let's go through. Yay! I missed it. Missed it. And uh, let me go just review where we're headed here and where we've been. Uh, we've been looking at uh, Unreal and looking at how we can actually change and getting ideas from Unreal to change paper vision as we move through the book and start making some updates. Uh, in video one, basically, we said, hey, let's add some gizmos. Let's add some dynamic lighting using paper vision. And let's add a, a draggable content browser. And in video two, we said, hey, you know what? Let's add a terrain a modeler. And a modeler itself for paper vision. So as opposed to having to import things, if you model something inside paper vision itself and save it and use compression algorithms, from the uh, Hunter Space book that I'm writing, you can actually uh, make things run a lot better. Once again, terrain gizmos and mode uh, painting, uh, that would be very cool to have as well. In, in video four, we saw the ability to have sky domes, efficient sky domes. The one in paper vision, then when you put them in there, they really hit your processor hard. But if you only put a portion of a sky dome and translate pixels, 
it will look like you have an entire uh, sky dome translating around. So it, you want to build basically one that has drag and drop so you can change materials on it, but also have that ability to make it more efficient than the ones that are in there now. And finally, uh, for the last part, hey, let's build a transporter. That's pretty cool. But let's build a transporter with a graphical interface so you can basically program it the way you saw us do in Unreal. Hey, Unreal's a great engine. A lot of material out there on the web to learn about it. This concludes this assignment for Chapter 2. But as we move through the book and begin making these changes to paper vision, we'll come back to Unreal and we'll do some more videos. So thanks for listening. This was Mike Lively. Hey, let's go have some fun. Ah!